Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Hope your day and your week are going well so far. We've got a new day, which of course means a new NBA player prop video to share with you guys. I have got a ton, a ton, a ton of player props to hand out for today, Wednesday, March 20th, NBA slate that I think you guys are going to like. But first, as always, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, drop a comment down below, all that good stuff. We are on the road right now to 100,000 subscribers here on the channel. We are already over the 60,000 mark, which means we are more than 60% of the way there. But when you hit that subscribe button down below, you help us get there just a little bit sooner. So make sure to join the Guy Boston Sports community. We have a ton of great content here on the channel. Obviously, college basketball tournament starts this week, so we're going to have some college basketball content. MLB starts next week. Tons and tons of content will be pouring out from us. Make sure you guys are subscribed. You will not want to miss any of it. I'll be doing MLB videos uh, for player props and stuff like that. So a lot of fun stuff coming up here on the channel. All right, guys, like I said, we have a ton of props similar to yesterday's video. I think that might be the way we go about this from now on is we just can't give you guys a ton of props. Um, we had a lot of props, so we have a lot of props again today. So a longer video, so let's not waste too much time here. We do have to go through a quick recap of what happened last night. And so we did cash last night. I didn't bring out the money gun because it wasn't a massive hit. And I felt like the money gun's got to be saved for when we have a really, really big night. Yes, we were positive, And yes, we cashed yesterday. But we didn't cash enough that I think we should have brought out the money gun. So that's why you, even though we had a positive night last night, I didn't bring out the money gun celebration. Um, that's reserved again for when we have a little more success than we had yesterday. So... Um, in the straight prop segment, I handed out eight player props. That's the most player props I've ever given out on, I think, any video ever. But I gave out eight player props in yesterday's video on just on the straight prop segment. And we went five and three. So going through the list, the Zion Williamson won under 25 and a half points, man. I thought we were golden with that pick. Um, and then, yeah, I think he had only like 16 points going into um, the fourth quarter. And to people in the comments who say I don't watch basketball, I do watch the games, especially when I give out player props and picks for said games. I play in a Tuesday men's soccer league, a little, little behind the scenes about my life. Um, I play soccer on Tuesday nights, and so I, I went into my game late at night at the start of the fourth quarter. He had, I think, 16 or 18 points, and I was like, all right, we're golden. Like, I don't think, you know, was, the Pelicans were, were leading convincingly. Uh, I just didn't think that he was going to cash this, and he had a massive uh, fourth quarter for the Pelicans. And so he ended up cashing, which was unfortunate. Brandon Ingram over 19 and a half points. I thought he would take advantage of the matchup. He did not. He fell short um, of our expectations there. But Mikael Bridges in that game did hit his under of 22 and a half points plus rebounds. He was the one I was more worried about going into the fourth quarter. And he actually was very quiet um, in the fourth. Didn't play much either. Only played 32 minutes. He had 27 minutes going into the fourth quarter. Only played five minutes in the fourth. Uh, Van Vliet also a miss. That one was just a complete miss. He just was awful. He didn't do he had 11 assists but had did no scoring whatsoever. Daniel Gafford was no no sweat at all. He cashed in the first half. PJ Washington started off really bad for us and then he just didn't do anything the rest of the game. So that was a nice hit on that under. Jokic, I told you guys it was a bounce back spot there. I know Minnesota defensively they've been good all year, but Gobert's hurt. Um uh, the Timberwolves second out of a back to back. I thought Jokic in a game where the top of the West was at stake, um I figured Jokic would have a big game and he definitely did not disappoint. And then our last bet that also hit was Michic again, another no sweat one. That cash, he had 18 points in the first half uh, for Charlotte. So overall, good slate. We had five props out of our eight we hit. So again, positive record. The parlay we did miss. Uh, we hit one. I don't have a, um, a graphic for the parlay. Um, we did go one for three. Again, I had the Zion under an alternate line, but still it did not hit at the alternate line. So that was a miss. Um, we also had Luka. At over 29 and a half points, he fell short. He had a horrible shooting night last night for Dallas. And then the only leg that did hit, we had the alternate line, Jokic, at over 24 and a half points. So that did hit. So overall, when you include the straight prop record and the parlay record, we went 6 and 5 um, on the 11 props that I handed out in yesterday's slate. So overall, not a bad day, but let's see if we can top it with today's slate. Between parlay and straight props today, I had actually 13 player props to hand out, nine in the straight prop segment, and then we have a four-leg parlay to close out today's video. We have wasted enough time here. Let's dive into today's slate. So starting off, the first player prop I'm giving out, guys, is in the Pacers-Pistons game, which kicks off at 7 p.m. Eastern time. We're going with Tyrese Halliburton of the Indiana Pacers over 10.5 assists. 
quickly just over to the outlier screen guys you know outliers are the best sports spending tool on the market link in the description below seven day free trial to try it out for you for yourself thank you very much to outlier as always for sponsoring the channel for sponsoring my videos again all the data you could possibly hope for is here and they actually they constantly update the website and put new stuff they just didn't update this week where now that you can see potential assists and potential rebound opportunities and all that stuff they constantly add more and more data on here and just make it an even better tool to use all right, so here we go. Tyrese Halliburton over 10 and a half assists. This is an alternate. This is kind of an alternate line. It is. I mean, his straight line is at 11 and a half, which it's at a plus money odd. I'm not taking it there. I'm going to take it at the 10 and a half point line, which is at minus 145 on Caesars, minus 150 on DraftKings, minus 160 on Bet MGM. So it is available on most books. You see here the data, not too bad. Six of his last 10 games, Halliburton has cashed this over. You stress that down to his last 20, 55% hit rate, 11 of his last 20 games. He has cashed this over. On the 2023 season as a whole, a 63% hit rate, 36 out of 57 games this year. He has cashed this over. And although lately, you know, his shooting and his he's in a kind of a scoring slump of late, you know, early in the year, he looked like an all-NBA guy. Now he's kind of falling off. He's not really shooting that great anymore. But the one thing that stayed pretty consistent for the most part has been his assist numbers. You saw there was a lot of green early in the year, but even still of late, still a lot of green with that assist mark. And when you look at the head-to-head -head data, they played three times against the Detroit Pistons this season. He's cashed it in two out of three the last two times they played. February 22nd versus Detroit, he had 13 assists. And the previous time before that, on December 11th, he had 16 assists. The first time they met back on November 24th, he had just missed the mark with 10 assists. But like I said uh, when I talked about the outlier um, update, they now show you potential assists, and you see here the average potential assists per game against the Pistons this year, or his last four matches, I should say, is 21.8. You saw on November 24th, 21 potential assists, 20 potential assists um, on December 11th, and 19 potential assists on February 22nd. So you're seeing there's a lot of opportunities for assists for Halliburton. You see here he has capitalized for the most part on those potential assists. But what that tells me, there's a ton of volume here and a ton of opportunities for assists for Halliburton. Although the Pistons are bad, they have been playing more competitive of late, and this has the highest point total of today's NBA slate at over the over-under set at 235. There's a lot of points being projected here. I think Halliburton, I'm not sure he'll score a lot. That's why I'm not taking his points plus assists points plus assist line excuse me but I'm taking the assist line here because I do think it's a pretty good bet and at minus 145 odds 150 on DraftKings it's not too bad defensively Detroit they're not too overall they're one of the bottom half of the league teams they're actually not a terrible defensive team uh you look at versus point guards and the assist numbers whoops uh, they are about middle of the road, giving them eight and a half assists per game. But again, you saw those potential assist numbers for Halliburton versus Detroit this year. Those numbers are high. All right, guys, and sticking with this same game, uh, we're sticking with the Pacers as well. We're going with Andrew Nemhard of the Indiana Pacers over 11 and a half points plus assists. This is another line that is available at minus 145. I know it's a little bit higher. It's kind of an alternate line. I said to Unstrafe Pops, I wouldn't do alternate lines. But to go any higher, you know, the value is not fantastic. Minus 105 is pretty good. I would still probably bet it here. Minus 110 on DraftKings. But we're going to go to minus one over 11 and a half for minus 145. It's really not that bad. Now, you look at Nemhard, his last 10 games, four of his last 10 games, he's cashed this over, which is not the best um over his last 20 games a little bit better 11 of his last 20 games it's a 55 percent hit rate but on the 2023 season as a whole um a 60 percent hit rate for andrew nemhard um 33 out of 55 games this year he has cashed this over so the majority of the time this season he has cashed this line for New for uh, indiana and most importantly, when you look at the head-to-head -head matchup here, each of the last five times he's faced off with the Detroit Pistons uh, dating back to March of last year, um, he's cashed this line. Now, you see it is a little bit descending, but the reality is he still cashed it, and he's played them twice this year on November 24th and then on February 22nd. He did not play when they played in December. Um, he cashed the line both times. This is really just a matchup spot here. I think Nemhard obviously is a guy who is not a household name. We always talk about in blowout potential. I think he'll still play a lot of minutes, even if this game is a blowout, which it could possibly be. Um, I think Nemhard will still play enough minutes there where the blowout doesn't scare me as much. And also Detroit defensively. Now you look here in the season, overall they are a bottom 14 defensively in points allowed. But versus the shooting guard position in particular, over the last seven games, Detroit has been caught awful. They're the worst defensive team in the, in the NBA against the shooting guard position in their last seven games, giving up 28 points per game to opposing shooting guards in their last seven games, and the most assists allowed in the NBA to the shooting guard position in the last seven games, giving up just a shy of seven assists per game to opposing shooting guards. 
It's a great defensive match, but look at the minutes played. You see here, that game on November 24th when he cashed it, he only played 20 minutes. He doesn't even need to play a ton. You look at his last 10 games just to see what his minutes have been looking like. Just to show you guys, he's been averaging about 28 minutes per game, and it's been kind of increasing of late. So he gets plenty of playing time. There's going to be plenty of shot opportunities here. The Pacers play at a pretty decent pace. Uh, I do think this is a fantastic prop here to bet. Minus 145 odds. I know it's a little bit higher, but I do love the spot here for Andrew Nembhard. All right, guys, the next game we're moving on to, sticking in the 7 p.m. time window, though. We're switching over our gears to the Miami Heat-Cleveland Cavaliers game, which keeps off at 7 p.m. each time. We're going with Jared Allen of the Cleveland Cavaliers under 28.5 points plus rebounds. Now, you look at his last 10 games. He's covered this in six of his last 10 games. You stretch that down to his last 20, a 60% hit rate, 12 of his last 20 games. And on the 2023 season as a whole, a 65% hit rate, 41 out of 63 games this year. He has cashed this under. And when you look at the head-to-head -head data, this is the important part of this. Each of his last six matchups versus the Miami Heat, including the two times they played this year, he has cashed this under versus Miami. This is this this bet honestly is all about the match. Look at the right side of the screen here. Um, the Miami Heat are the third best defense in the NBA in terms of points allowed against opposing centers. They've given up just 16.6 points per game to opposing centers. Although rebounding numbers on the season, they're about middle of the road. It's not the best, but it's not terrible. Um, that point number is what we're really looking at here. And that's been consistent. Even over their last 15 games, you really narrowed the data down. They are still top five in the NBA in terms of points allowed against centers. So a very good defensive matchup. Bam Adebayo, he knows what he's doing here. Um, Jared Allen's not exactly a, an off Offensive stalwart either. It's not like he's a great offensive player to begin with. In a defensive matchup such as this, I do think they'll be able to slow him down. And so I know what you guys are thinking. Obviously, the Cavs have no Mitchell, no Struess, um, no Mobley for tonight's game. This is his numbers this season in five games without Struess, without Mitchell, and without Mobley. And so you see here, he has cashed the over three out of those five games. But do understand that Indiana, they're a decent defensive team versus bigs, but not great. Uh, Minnesota, who obviously are very good, but remember this is when Carl Anthony Towns was hurt and everything. And then also um, Atlanta, who's been awful uh, versus big men this season. So uh, the Minnesota game, a little bit of an outlier, but he has cashed this a couple times. Brooklyn's been very good versus centers this year defensively, and he ca and he cashed the under there. Um, again, I know the thing with this game is the point total is set at 204, which is by far the lowest point total of today's slate. Vegas is not expecting a ton of points in this game here. The Cavs are slightly favored. I just think if you're going to go with somebody here that's going to score, it's just not going to be Jared Allen. 20 and a half points plus rebounds, I just don't see it happening. So I like this for the third prop of today's slate. All right, here we go, guys. The fourth the fourth prop, excuse me, of today's slate. We're sticking with that Heat-Cavs game. Uh, we're going with Darius Garland of the Cleveland Cavaliers over six and a half assists. He's covered this line in five of his last 10 games. You stretch that down to his last 20, a 65% hit rate, 13 of his last 20 games. You see here when he misses, he just barely misses. Um, on the 2023 season as a whole, a 50% hit rate, 22 out of 44 games. He had a rough start, but he has been much better um, of late. You look at the head-to-head -head matchup here. In two of his last five games versus Miami, he has cashed this over. Um, the two times he played this year, he hit the under. But again, the last time they played back in December, he just barely missed the mark. Now, there's not a ton of data here for with, when, when uh, Garland plays without Mobley and without Mitchell. But he's done it five times this year. In three of those five games when, when he's played and Mobley and Mitchell have been out, he's cashed the over in three of those five games. The two times he didn't, he had five assists in both of those. But you look at the potential assists there, he plays almost 35 minutes a game with 12 potential assists per game uh, without them. His usage rate goes through the roof. It goes a lot higher uh, when, he, when he plays and those guys don't. It's a tight game, low total, I know, but the spread is only two-and-a-half point spread and the Cavs are favored. Um, his usage rate is going to be very, very high. He's going to get a lot of touches. A lot of potential assists, I think, here in this game. So I do like this spot here for Garland over six and a half assists. All right, guys, for the fifth prop of today's slate, we're targeting the Jazz Thunder game, which kicks off at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We're going with Chet Holmgren of the Oklahoma City Thunder over 14 and a half points. Now, look, I know people are definitely scared to bet Chet, and I understand why, but he has cashed this line in six of his last 10 games. You stretch that down to his last 20, 65% hit rate, 13 of his last 20 games. And if you look at the season as a whole, it's honestly pretty impressive. His 67% hit rate, 45 out of 67 games this year, he's cashed the over. So, I mean, he's been covering consistently all year. And look at the head-to-head -head matchup. 
Each of the last three times he's faced off with the Utah Jazz, all three times he's played them this year, he has cashed the over. He had 16 points against them on December 11th. Um, he had 15 points against them on January 18th. And 22 points against them the last time they played on February 6th. You add into that the fact that with Utah here, looking down below, uh, no marketing and John Collins is a game time decision with he got hit in the head in that monstrous Anthony Edwards dunk the other night. Um, I just think that their size... I think Chet Holmgren will be able to take advantage of this matchup here. It also is worth noting, over the last 30 games, the Utah Jazz have the worst defense in the NBA against the center position. According to our friends at Fantasy Pros, over the last 30 games, the Utah Jazz are giving up 28.52 points per game to opposing centers. And you narrow it down to even like their last seven games, they are the fourth worst defense in the NBA against centers, giving up 26.78 points per game. They give out a ton of points to centers. Chet Holmgren, I know he's listed as a power forward, but he plays center for the Thunder. Him to score 15 points here. He's done it all three times they played this year. I think it's a pretty solid spot here for Chet in this matchup. All right, guys, comment 15 down below if you made it this far into today's video. I know it's a longer video. we got a ton of props, but you guys are troopers if you're still here after all this time. Comment 15 down below if you made it this far into the video. Here is the sixth prop in our straight prop segment for today's slate. And yes, I know I'm a glutton for punishment. We're going with Kawhi Leonard of the LA Clippers in the Clippers Trailblazers game. Under 26 and a half points. Let me start off by saying here, this game has the second lowest point total of any game in today's slate. Only that uh, Heat Cavs game we talked about earlier has lower. Uh, the Clippers Blazers game, the over under is set at 217. So Vegas is not expecting this to be a high flying affair. And the Clippers are 12 point favorites against Portland tonight. So what are we seeing there with the game lines, with Vegas, what the sports books are telling us? It's a very high spread, so they're expecting a blowout win for the Clippers here, and they're not expecting to, there to be a ton of scoring, especially uh, from the Blazers' side of things, I'm sure. Um, but what that tells me is that I just don't see Kawhi Leonard having a massive scoring performance. Now, there is data to support this. He's covered this in five of his last 10 games. You start to doubt it was last 20. 12 of his last 20 games, a 60% hit rate. And on the 2023 season as a whole, a 66% hit rate, 40 out of 61 games this year, he has cashed this under. So the unders are actually been hitting pretty consistently for Kawhi. Um, you look at the unders, he's cashed the under two of the last four times. He's faced off with Portland. The last time they played on December 11th, he had 34 points, but remember, you look at the score right here, the Clippers won 132 to 127. It was a five-point game, and he played almost 39 minutes, and he scored 34 points. The time before that, the Clippers won by 12. He had 23 points, and he played 28 minutes. This is a game where I feel like the Clippers are definitely going to rest some of these guys, especially Kawhi Leonard, who has been playing a lot, obviously with the injuries to guys like Westbrook, and I know Paul George missed a little bit of time, and they've had some injuries. James Harden has been playing as well, so Kawhi's had to step up. Up. He's going to play more minutes and take on more responsibility. This is a great spot for the Clippers to rest him a little bit and not have him play a ton of minutes. So I don't think he's going to play um, a lot tonight for uh, the Clippers here. And look, it's a solid defensive matchup as well. You look at the right side of the screen here. On the season, the Trailblazers have a top 10, top 10 defense against small forwards in terms of points allowed. They are actually top six in the NBA, giving them just 19 points per game on the season to opposing small forwards. That number is not as impressive as the season's gone along. If you narrow that down to the last 15 games, it's still uh, top half of the league. They give up 20 points per game, so not as good, but it's still they're a solid defensive team versus the small forward position. The same is true for Power 4, where uh, Kawhi also spends some of his time. So overall, a solid defensive team versus the forward positions. Um, mixed out with the fact that it should be a blowout game, it's a good spot for, for the Clippers to give Kawhi a little bit of rest. Um, I really do think that you know he could have a decent game. I just don't think him scoring 27 points in this game uh, is a likely outcome. Again, I, I love taking these Kawhi unders. It's kind of crazy because he's a superstar, and I don't like usually betting superstar unders. But um, I took this bet twice last week. We went one and two on it. One time it hit, one time it didn't. This is the third time in the last two weeks I'm taking this Kawhi under. It's a pretty good spot. Again, 66% hit rate on the year. So overall, a solid spot. All right, guys, for the seventh prop of today's straight bet uh, slate, excuse me, we are targeting the Suns-Sixers game, which we stuff at 10 p.m. Eastern time. We're going with Tobias Harris of the Philadelphia 76ers under 18 and a half points. The dad is fantastic for this one. If you guys watch these videos, this is also a guy I love betting his unders. He's cashed this under in seven of his last 10 games. You stretch that down to his last 20, 14 of his last 20 games, a 70% hit rate. On the 2023 season as a whole, a 62% hit rate, 37 out of 60 games this year. He has cashed this under for Philly. You look at the head-to-head -head data here. Two of the last three times he's faced off 
with uh, the Phoenix Suns. He's cashed under Kuhn the last time they played on November 4th of this season. Uh, he had 18 points. But again, remember, very different version of the Sixers back then. That's when they had Joel Embiid. And Tyrese Maxey was playing at a really, really high level. Uh, the Suns, now overall in the year, they're not a very good defensive team versus the power forward. But of late, they have been a lot better. In their last 15 games, they're like smack dab in the middle. I believe they're like 15th or 14th in terms of points allowed. So not a good defensive team versus power forwards. Not a bad defensive team versus power forwards either. I just don't see Tobias Harris having a big scoring game here for the Sixers. That's that's our first prop from this game. In our second prop from this game, our eighth, and fi- our eighth prop, excuse me, overall from our straight prop slate. Um, we're going with Kevin Durant of the Suns over 24 and a half points. Now, look, KD's had a little bit of a cold streak on scoring. You see his last three games, some pretty bad scoring performances for Durant. But overall, the data is good on this line. You're not going to find this point line for Durant at 24.5 very often. And at minus 105 odds, it's pretty good. Like, it's really hard to find Durant at this low of point line this season. It was the last 20 games, a 55% hit rate, 11 of his last 20 games. He's cashed the over. You see he misses it just by a little bit sometimes. On the 2023 season as a whole, a 69 nice percent hit rate for Durant. 42 out of 61 games this year, he has cashed this over. And you see in the beginning of the year, that's the reason why this point total, you would never see this low. Because at this line, earlier in the year, it was an automatic cash. This would have been like a heavy alternate line, this 24.5 point line. You would have gotten this at like minus 290 or minus 320. That's how consistently he was cashing this line. Of late, a little more red. You see he's not hitting it as consistently. Part of that has to do with Bradley Beal finally being there and Devin Booker being more consistent and you know having to share the court a little bit more. Um, But I do think Durant here... We'll take advantage of the matchup. On the season, the Sixers, they are bottom half of the league, giving up 24.5 points per game to opposing power forwards. And over their last seven games, the Sixers have been giving up a good amount of points to opposing power forwards. They are in the top half of the league in terms of points allowed to opposing power forwards over the last seven games. So uh, when you combine that with the fact that Durant, again, is just one of the best offensive players in the game, Couple bad games in a row. This is a really good get right spot for Durant. This game has a pretty high point total too, which means they're expecting scoring to happen. If it's gonna happen, it's gonna come from from Phoenix, I think, and a lot of that could come from Kevin Durant. So that's the eighth prop of our straight prop segment. All right, guys, we made it our ninth and final prop for today's straight prop segment. We're targeting the Bucks Celtics game, which kicks off at 7 30 p.m. Eastern time. We're going with Jason Tatum of the Boston Celtics over 25 and a half points. The data is pretty good. He's covered this line in nine of his last 10 games. Whoops, excuse me. Nine of his last 10 games, he has cashed this over. His last 20 games, 14 of his last 20, it's a 70% hit rate. And on the 2023 season as a whole, a 59% hit rate, 38 out of 64 games he's cashed over. He has been playing a lot better um, of late. Look at the head-to-head matchup. Two of the last four times he's faced off with Phoenix, uh, with Milwaukee, excuse me, he has cashed this over. The last time he played on January 11th, he only played like 16 minutes and a blowout loss to the Celtics. He had seven points. The time before that, on November 22nd, he had 23 points. The big thing to remember here is that Giannis Antetokounmpo is out for the Bucks tonight, so that is a big reason why Tatum sometimes can struggle with it. Defensively, having to score when Giannis is, is on the court is very difficult. Uh, no Giannis tonight, and defensively, it's not like the Bucks are, are – they've been playing a lot better defensively of late, but when Giannis is not in the lineup, it, their defense definitely takes a dip. Um, I think Tatum you know, – Jalen Brown's a questionable game-time decision with an ankle injury. It kind of feels like they're putting Chris Ops on a little bit of a minutes restriction. With all that being said, his usage rate is going to be very high for tonight's game, I think. And so I do think Jason Tatum scoring 26 points is a pretty safe bet. All right, guys, so that is it for the straight props segment. Again, thank you for sticking around. I know this, these videos are longer. We'll see if I stick with this format with all the giving out like you know a ton of player props every single day. Maybe I'll just go back to limiting it a little bit. If you guys can sound off in the comments, let me know. Do you like this? these extended videos with all these player props? It does give you a lot more options. But... Uh, here we go. We got a four-leg parlay to close out today's slate of games. Let's not waste any more time, guys. Let's finish off strong. All right, go back to the outlier screen. Now, now the good news about this player prop parlay here is that a lo- three of the four legs are just alternate lines of props 
I've already given you in today's video, so we won't have to go too much into it here. But we're going Chet Holmgren, first leg of our four-leg parlay, Chet Holmgren, over 15.5 points plus assists. We took him at over 14.5 points in the straight prop segment. This is available on DraftKings from minus 195 odds. The data is good. Seven of his last 10 games, he's cashed this over. On the 2023 season, a 73% hit rate, 49 out of 67 games. His last 20 games, a 75% hit rate, 15 of his last 20 games, he's cashed this over. All the defensive metrics that I talked about earlier are still, they hold true. And the data just looks a lot cleaner and a lot better when you take him at this line. So that's the first leg of our four-leg parlay. And for the second leg of our four-leg parlay, we're doing pretty much the exact same thing we just did with Chet. We're doing it in this time with Andrew Nemhard of the Indiana Pacers. We're going over 10.5 points plus assists. So we took him at the over 11.5 point mark um, with our regular prop. And now we're taking him at over 10.5 points plus assists on this one. Same odds to minus 195, just like the Chet Holmgren prop. The data is still not fantastic for the last 10 games, but on the season, still a 64% hit rate, 35 out of 55 games. And again, the defensive metrics all hold true. Detroit, over the last seven games or so, has been the worst defensive team in the NBA against shooting guard. This game has the highest point total of any game in today's slate. There's going to be a lot of points. I don't see a lot of them coming from Detroit. The Pacers are a pretty decently high favorite in this game as well. I think Nemhard is going to play at least 30 minutes, and he's going to catch this line pretty easily. So that's the second leg of our four-leg parlay. All right, guys, for the third leg of today's parlay, we're, this is the last prop that is an alternate line of a prop I've already given out. This is Kevin Durant over 24.5 points plus assists. This line is minus 245 on DraftKings, a high, heavy alternate, but the data... <clears throat> excuse me, looks fantastic here. Last 20 games, 70% hit rate, 14. I was last 20 games, he's cashed this line. On the 2023 season as a whole, an 82, 82% hit rate, 50 out of 61 games this year. He has cashed this over, 91% hit rate last year. So heavy alternate line, yes, but a greater, greater chance, greater, greater chance of hitting this prop. And for the fourth and final leg of today's parlay, we're targeting the Memphis Grizzlies Golden State Warriors game which kicks off at 10 p.m. Eastern time. We're going with Draymond Green of the Golden State Warriors over 10.5 points plus assists. Again, a heavy alternate line, but the data is great. Minus 255 right now on DraftKings. He's cashed this line in seven of his last 10 games. On the 2023 season, an 81% hit rate, 34 of his last of 42 games this year. Um, he has cashed this over in the head-to-head -head rankings. Each of the last six times he's faced off with the Memphis Grizzlies, including the both times he played them this year, he has cashed this over. And on the season, Memphis, they're pretty good defensively versus the power four position, but of late, those numbers are not as impressive. And again, the data for Draymond here, each of the last six times he's faced off with the Grizzlies, cashed this line. You cannot beat a prop like this. I know it's a heavy alternate at minus 255, but the value and the data is just fantastic here. So here we go, guys. Here is our four-leg parlay for today's parlay. Move my screen over here for you guys. Real quick recap, Chet Holmgren over 15.5 points plus assists. Andrew Nemhard over 10.5 points plus assists. Kevin Durant over 24.5 points plus assists. And Draymond Green over 10.5 points plus assists. You parlay all four of those legs together, you get a parlay of plus 349 odds. Guys, that is it for me today in today's video. Thank you very much, as always, for watching. Thank you for sticking around. I know these videos are getting longer and longer. This one's pushing 30 minutes. I'm definitely going to need a big glass of water after this one. Let me know in the comments how you feel about the longer videos, if you guys like the fact that I'm giving you guys a ton, a ton, a ton of props every day. Or do you guys like it when I kind of narrow it down a little bit more? Let me know in the comments below what you think about the longer videos. If you want me to go back to kind of shorter videos, you guys let me know in the comments down below. I I will be back tomorrow with a new NBA player prop video. Until then, I hope we're all winners.